Hello. Today we're going to go over how to install Percona Monitoring and Management, also known as PMM, as well as enable the database as a service feature that will allow you to uh, enjoy your own RDS-like experience on your hardware maintaining control of your data. Um, you will have a few prerequisites that you'll need uh, before starting, and that'll be your um, AWS uh, access key ID and your AWS secret access key. Both of those are available through your Amazon console. You'll need to be a root user or have the appropriate permission in your IAM settings. Uh, but we have a blog on that that'll give you all the details on how to go about getting it. Um, if you know what you're doing in that respect and already have that stuff tucked away, uh, the command that you use is as simple as a curl that pulls down a script. This one's tailored specific for Amazon. We will plan on releasing one for GKE and perhaps other cloud providers as well. Um, and effectively, I pass in the two values, uh, which are my Amazon secret access key, uh, my Amazon access key ID, and my Amazon secret access key. Um, I could optionally pass in a different region. It will default to US East 2, um, but any region that you want to specify, you can do so right here uh, just by putting in the Amazon um, format. We're going to stick with US East 2 um, just because I know everything works there. So what's happening right now is we're downloading all the prerequisite software. This is gonna allow your system to actually um, get everything up and running in Amazon. And uh, you can see we've already gotten the tools installed and configured using our key. And we are using CloudFormation to deploy a three node Kubernetes cluster that we'll be able to attach PMM to once that's up and running. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and get PMM up and running. Uh, let's see. Oh, can't type today. Oh, looks like I already have one running. So let's do this. I'll tell you what, let's uh, Docker stop PMM server. And I'll actually take you through the entire process end to end. So super docker PM. All right, so we've got nothing going there. So we've also got an easy install script for PMM itself. And what that does allows you to paste in a similarly short command, pipe it straight to bash and get everything up and running. Now, if you wanna inspect any of this, you can just pull the command itself down, um, but I actually want to run it. Uh, so we're going to leave the bin bash on the end. Um, it's going to go quick for me because I've already downloaded the images. Um, that would be probably the longest portion of the entire process. Um, what we do is, you know, go through, validate your system has the prerequisites, try to make the connections, elevate privilege if needed. And uh, since I'd already done sudo, um, it, it, you know, elevated my privilege and we can verify this with a quick uh, Docker PS. And now you see we have uh, a healthy PMM server. The nice part about the script is it already tells you the IP addresses you can find your PMM server at. Um, just pick the one that your local machine has access to. I'm running this all on a VM, so we're just gonna keep it all locally. We will copy this address here and open that up in our browser. And First thing you're greeted with is this daunting message. We use self-signed certificates, so it's natural that your system won't trust that. If I had used local host, I could have proceeded a little more easily, but I know what's going on here, so I can just proceed anyway. Uh, to log in, you're just gonna use the default credentials, admin, admin, uh, and then you can change them if you so choose. I'm gonna skip that for now, since I will probably destroy this machine when all said and done, and I'm in PMM. So actually, because we're still waiting, I and mean, if we go back and look at our, our progress screen here, um, we're probably, yeah, we're, we've got probably another 15 minutes to go. So we're gonna actually be done with all the setup and configuration, and we'll just be waiting on cloud formation to finish. But we'll go over here anyway. Um, so first thing we wanna do is let's go get our PMM set up for database as a service. So uh, I'm in as an admin, I navigate to the settings icon, and then the settings page. And under the advanced settings, we have our area for our technical preview features. 
database as a service is still in technical preview. It's not GA, but we put it here because we feel it's ready for you to kick around with it. There are uses that it is good for, um, but we just consider them non-production uses at this point. So I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna enable database as a service, and I'm also gonna set my public address. This is just uh, so that we can um, create links automatically for you. So I'm just gonna pull it down from the browser. But if you had maybe a web accessible PMM and you wanted to use a DNS name uh, and had that up here, you could set it up and just pull it down or set it to whatever you want. So apply those changes. When that applies, you're gonna see a new icon appear over on our left-hand menu, the database as a service icon. And when we click on this, you see we have an option to register a new Kubernetes cluster. Now, this is what we're setting up in the background. Um, but like I said, this process takes about 16 minutes, 18 minutes to complete. Uh, we started at 11.33 and it's 11.38. So we've got a while to wait. So what we're gonna do is probably use the magic of video editing uh, since I don't plan on doing anything entertaining for the next 15 or so minutes. And we'll come back when we actually have a completed installation. And we're back in perfect time. So let's go ahead and copy our configuration so you can get it from the begin all the way down to the end, including the comment. Copy that out of our window. Let's call this one our AWS test cluster and paste in our file and register. So what's going on right now is not only is it connecting to our EKS instance, but it's doing a quick inventory, recognizing that neither of the operators have been installed. And it's also downloading and installing the uh, PXC, Percona Extra Cluster operator, as well as a, the operator for uh, Percona Server for MongoDB. So right off the bat, you'll have access to both of them at the latest version. And that's all you need to get it up and running. You see that the DB cluster tab is now enabled. And away you go.